Hello everybody, I'm Nick and with the release of .NET 9 Preview 3 we got an exciting announcement that exceptions are 2 to 4 times faster now and in case you didn't know, exceptions are a big big performance issue especially if you're using them how many people are using them to represent domain related events those exceptions can really really have an impact to how your application is performing so in this video I'm going to show you how exceptions used to perform, how they perform now, and why I personally still think that they totally suck and you should not use them for that use case, at least most of the time anyway. If you like that content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training, check out my courses on DomeTrain.com. Now, usually I don't put this in the beginning of the video, but I want to give everyone the opportunity to use this amazing promotion, so I'm happy to announce that DomeTrain is one year old today. I launched DomeTrain all the way in April 2023, and what a journey it has been. 20 more courses, 11 more authors, and so, so much more coming that I can't wait to announce. Now, to celebrate the occasion, I'd like to have a massive promotion, and that's going to be the biggest promotion yet. It's at the level of Black Friday, so don't miss this opportunity. Until the 30th of April, you can use discount code BIRTHDAY40 to get 40% off any of our courses, BIRTHDAY20 to get 20% off any of our already discounted bundles and you can use code BIRTHDAY15 to get 50% off your first year of Dome Train Pro, our annual subscription that gives you access to all of our courses and we have so so much more coming up so thank you for being part of the 30,000 students that are trusting Dome Train with their education and I can't wait to see the next 30,000 on our platform now back to the video okay so let me show what I have here I have a simple console application over here it doesn't really have anything uh, and it is a .NET 8 project so I'm still using old .NET 8 because I want to compare the two. So the best way to show you how bad the exceptions are performance wise is with a benchmark and I have a benchmark over here. I already wrote one using benchmark.NET and as you can see I'm instantiating an example class and then I'm calling two methods the good method and the flaky method. Now the good method as you can see here uses a randomizer on a per method execution meaning that it will deterministically fail or succeed with the same ratio. Now, in this case, it will only succeed. Uh, but as many times as I run this method, it's going to give me the exact same sequence of randomness because I'm using a random number here uh, to get those random dot next calls. And this will just keep looping. It will ultimately go uh, here sometimes and then return. Yeah, that's good. That's the count of this method. And then I have the bad method, the flaky method that has the same seed. So these two methods will deterministically return the same sort of randomness. But what I'm doing here is that sometimes around half, uh, we're going to have an exception and that exception will be caught in the same way you would throw an exception in your application, maybe as a domain consent to represent that the email is taken or that you have a validation error and so on. I'm not a fan of this idea and you're going to see later why, but many, 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 many people do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just run this benchmark and we're going to have a thousand executions per computation every time. So this will fail around half the time. So we're going to say benchmark runner dot run and I'm going to run this benchmark for dot net eight. So let's go ahead, release mode and see what we get back. So results are back. Let's see what we have here. So as you can see, the method that doesn't fail allocates very little memory and 2.3 microseconds, while the method that might fail 1.9 milliseconds for the same level of computation. Now, obviously one fails, one doesn't. But we're going to see later why that doesn't really matter that much. Now, what I want to do is I want to just turn the exact same thing into a .NET 9 project. So I'm going to save these over here. Let's just put them here. And then what I'm going to do is update this project to be uh, .NET 9 SDK on the solution level and then .NET 9 on the project level. Uh, and once I do that, I'm going to just rebuild and I'm going to run the benchmarks to see how the two now compare. Okay, so results are back and let's see what we have here. So as you can see now, 2.2 at microseconds over here on the good one, but 955 microseconds on what used to be 1.9. So half the time of what it used to take now to throw these exceptions is taken in .NET 9 just by upgrading the version. However impressive as this seems, because it is a twice as fast situation, 
Well, the memory hasn't improved at all, and this will bite you in the ass later when you need to have memory allocations and you handle these uh, high exception workflows, because many people use these types of exceptions to represent bad requests on an API where a middleware is handling it, a validation exception, and so on. And because this is based on user input, if someone just tries wrong emails, you're going to have this situation where they're just spamming you with bad exceptions uh, and they can slow down your application. So in my opinion, yes, this is a very impressive feat. And they say that it actually goes all the way to four times faster in some scenarios. I haven't got that number, but twice as fast, it's still very, very impressive, but there's no improvement in memory. And I do think that you should still not be using exceptions, especially when it comes down to representing domain related concerns like validation errors, uh, email not found and so on. And why do I say that? Well, I say that because what's what we can have here? What I'm going to do is I'm going to add an extra method in here. And this method will look like this. Now, this method is my result method. So it's not going to fail with an exception, but it will still give me the exact same experience as if it failed with an exception. What I'm doing is I still have the exact same random number. I still have the exact same random class. And then I have the same thresholds for failure. And what I'm saying here is, compute something, and if that comes back as a failure, increase the count. Same thing I would do in the exception scenario. But how am I doing that? Well, in here I have a nested method that represents this, I can either succeed or fail scenario, where if I succeed, I'm going to return an integer, but if I fail, I'm going to return a naughty request representing failure. And that is a type of one-off, which is sort of a discriminated union, which is added through a NuGet package, which you can see over here. I've talked about one-off before. If you want me to have a refresher video at some point, leave a comment down below and let me know, and I will do that. And now what this will do is, hey, if things are good, then I'm going to return one. But if things are bad, I'm going to tell you that, hey, things were bad. And that's about it. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate this method in this benchmark class. And I'm going to say method that might fail with result. So my result method. And now in this optimized version, we're going to have all three. I'm going to go ahead and just run this benchmark. All right, so results are back. Let's see what we have here. So as you can see, and maybe you're not surprised about this, but with the result type, we have the exact same experience as with the exception, but we handle it in a very similar way as the one that doesn't fail. Same memory allocation as in the beginning and same execution time. So same thing as before, but way, way better. And actually, because now you can say that, yeah, Nick, but you're not using one of in the way it's intended to be used. No, that is one of its intended uses. You can say that if this is T1, which means the second thing in the sequence of generic type parameters. So T0 would be int, T1 is not a request. Well, I can also have this thing over here where I can say result.match, which is supposed to be how you properly handle it. And then if it is an integer, you can do something with that integer. Uh, and if it is a failure, you can do something with that failure. In this case, you know, you can get um, data out of that request, the object, or you can say, at count dot plus plus, which will mean you lose the value. But if I was to rewrite the exact same thing, uh, what I can do is say this returns zero and this returns uh, one, which represents success and failure. I can, in this case, discard these objects. I can do this and this, and then I can pass obviously some lambdas down, which will give you a better representation of how this is supposed to perform. Then I can just remove all that and I'm going to run the benchmark again with exactly how this should look if you were to do it properly without cheating with the is t0 or is t1. I still don't think it is cheating to use the is t1 if you want to represent failure, if you know that's all you have to check. But just for argument's sake, I'm going to do the exact same thing um, and show you how it would compare even if you pattern match and you pass down a lambda. So results are back. And as you can see, basically the same thing, like marginally slower, but you don't even notice it. So even with the proper matching, way, way faster than anything exceptions can ever do. So yes, exceptions are cool. It is nice that now they perform twice to all the way up to four times faster. And you will see that in how your application handles exceptions. 
But for situations where this is a domain thing, maybe don't use them. I still don't think it's a great idea. But now I want to know from you. What do you think about this? What do you think about this improvement? What do you think about exceptions in general? Are you using result or language extensions or one of? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.